From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Ropecast, a podcast for people interested in English and everything connected with it. In the studio with me today, I have a welcome guest, Roz from Bristol, who already told us something about Bristol's history and then about what a wonderful place it is for food and for traveling around and for its green credentials. I don't think we've really exhausted Bristol as a place to be, though. No, absolutely. Um, hello, Roger. Um, <laughs> one thing that I think we haven't touched on at all is something that's really dear to my heart, um, which is the university culture ah, in right. Bristol. Yeah. So you teach at the university there? Yes, I do. I work in the English literature department. They're teaching um, undergraduates and postgraduates. Tell us a little bit about Bristol as a university in general, please. Well, the, un the university is quite a large university. It's split into various faculties um, from humanities and arts through to social sciences, biological sciences, physical sciences and so on. So it's a very big university, um, which I think is what, what we would call research intensive. Yes. Um, but also it's, it's very obviously a teaching institution as well. And it is um, among the most prestigious in, in the country, isn't it? It's right up there with Oxford and Cambridge. If you look at the so-called league tables. I believe that would be the case, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're, you're being very modest. <laughs> no, I noticed that the name Bristol comes up there in the top 10 of British universities mm. for many, many things alongside Oxford, Cambridge, Durham, Manchester. So it's one of the, the really big ones. Yes. In terms of um, what it achieves and the prestige that goes along with it. Um, how easy is it for students to get in to study there? Bristol is a selective institution, um, so it is expected that students um, gain the top grades that they can in their schooling in yeah. order to come to university at Bristol. Does that mean that you have um, an interesting mix of students, or does that mean that some groups in society are, if not excluded, then at least kind of um, not represented in the numbers. This is something which has been a matter of great debate in recent years, particularly, actually, I think a journalist from the BBC very recently interviewed someone from Bristol on Radio 4. One thing that um, Bristol is focusing on now is in diversifying the student body, mm -hmm. um, particularly um, in terms of students who come from a background where it is unusual to go to university yes. or they may not have thought of going to university before. Right. Um, so one thing that Bristol does is they have a foundation year programme for students who who need to access university if they if they haven't had the opportunities they, they, they could have had in another situation at school, they can do a foundation year right. to access the yeah. degree course. And what about um, student life in Bristol? What's, what's it like to be, you know, to, to live there as a student? I think Bristol is a really welcoming city for students. The students tend to live in the northern part of the city. Um, I think there is a joke amongst Bristolians that, that students very rarely go south of the river. Um, but it's a, the, the student body is very lively. Um, I suppose one thing that might differentiate a British university such as Bristol from a German university is that many of the students who are in their first or second year of study tend to live in university accommodation mm. in university we call them university halls yes um so they'll live in blocks of say 200 mm -hmm. students um, and that tends to become the focal point for social life yeah. at university in addition to student societies of course yes Perhaps you should say a word about student societies because that's something that um, doesn't necessarily exist in other countries. Yes, absolutely. Um, because most students um, tend to move away from home to go to university and they, they tend to be living in, the, in a new city um, for the first time. 
one of the key features, I think, um, outside of classes at a university is that students tend to join um, societies, whether it's to play football or to play hockey um, or maybe to join a drama society. Um, Bristol has a really thriving um, theatre society and they put on productions of all kinds of plays and mm. so on. Um, likewise, there is a student music society where there are choirs and orchestras. Yeah. Um, I think there are probably um, some more unusual societies as well. Um, I can't speak particularly for, for Bristol, but at other institutions that I've been connected with, there's been a teddy bears picnic society, <laughs> um, a Tunnock's wafer society, a what? Um, <laughs> celebrating the Scottish delicacy that is the Tunnock's oh. caramel wafer. Oh, right. So university societies also tend to take in rather more niche interests. <laughs> yeah, when I was at university myself, I was in the German society, <laughs> I was studying German, but also in a hiking club mm -hmm. and then various musical things as well. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's really quite a, a, a vivid student life and a great variety of opportunities for students. Yes, absolutely. I think one of the uh, big differences between uh, life here at a German university and a British one like Bristol is the fact that in Bristol, students will be very much on a three-year course or perhaps a four-year course, and they will stick to it. They will graduate or perhaps not. Maybe they'll drop out. But on the whole, they, they graduate in that allotted time span. And that contrasts very much with the German situation, which you've experienced as a visitor now. Yes. You may have realised that some of the students here are around for a whole lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think one of the things that this comes back to a question you were asking earlier about um, entry criteria yeah. um, for, for studying at Bristol, you apply to a specific course, yeah. whether that be biochemistry or English literature or modern languages. Mm. Um, and you go through that course year on year. You are in your first year and then you move up to your second year and so on. Yes. So it's a very structured system, yes. I think. Um, and there are positives mm -hmm. to that um, in, in, in that students do have a, a very intensive period of study. I think the flip side is that students may come out feeling that, gosh, those three years went really quickly. Um, now... What do I do now? Yes. <laughs> Which helps to explain the phenomenon of the gap year, perhaps. Absolutely. <laughs> if, they, if they don't do it before university, then they do it afterwards. Yes. yes. Well, thank you very much, Ros, for those insights, not only to Bristol life, but also university life in, in the UK. And I hope we can uh, get you back to Zabrican at some time in the future to tell us a little bit more. Thank you very much for today. Bye, dear listeners. Bye. You've been listening to Robecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.